What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Coming to you guys with another wine of the week. And surprise, surprise, um, I'm going to actually be coming to you guys with two wines this week because I want uh, you guys to be fully prepared for the upcoming holiday, which is Christmas. You guys are going to be um, having people in your home, friends and family, and you guys are going to be going to visit. And I am a true Southerner. When I go to someone's home, I always take something. And usually it is a really, really good bottle of wine. I just think that um, it's one of the few things that people don't splurge on a lot. Is a good good bottle of wine so I like to take it along with me just to say thank you so much for having me in your home. Um, you guys know that we're um, counting down through the Apothic series <clears throat> for the holidays um, and we've already done um, Apothic Inferno on our first um, uh, maiden voyage of wine of the week here at Miss Honey's. And um, the second wine that we did with us was Apothic Dark. Um, and today I'm coming to you with Apothic Crush. Um, the funny thing is, is that um, Apothic Crush and Apothic Dark both were limited batch release. If I remember correctly, just looking out on the internet. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys, my voice is so deep. I'm fighting something off. But anyway, um, and now, you know, it's pretty much a mainstream wine out there. It is one of the higher price point wines that Apothic has in their series. Um, but, and, and I've never had it before. So you and I are going to be experiencing Apothic Crush together. Um, and you guys will get my initial reaction, uh, as which you all know is always like <laughs> turned up, right? Okay. Um, so let's just talk about it real quick, okay? Apothic Crush is a smooth red blend. It is, uh, this is a 2014 California variety. I've already opened it so that it can just start to breathe and open up a little bit. And the first thing I will tell you about it, not having read the back of the bottle yet, the first thing that I will tell you about it is when I first opened it and pulled it out, I could, it smelled like grape juice. If you guys have ever had Welch's grape juice, um, it smelled just like grape juice. It reminds me of grape juice. And then but now that I smell the cork after um, it has had an opportunity to open up a little bit, it it doesn't have that grape juice smell anymore. It you know the the wine just opens up beautifully. Now, um, let's read the back of the bottle. Let's talk a little bit more about what we can expect um, from our first sip. Um, of course, you guys know Miss Honey is, um, okay, we're gonna educate you and we have to look educated, don't we? Alrighty. Um, it says Apothic Crush Smooth Red Blend, the first taste entices. Mm. Stimulating the senses and the next taste ignites. Arousing passion. Miss mm. Honey's by herself tonight, so she doesn't know if she wants to arouse the passion, but she is going to go ahead and give it a try, okay? All right. Mm. A decadent red blend that combines red fruit flavors with notes of caramel and a velvety smooth mouth feel. Okay. And again, you guys can find um, all of the write-ups and um, more information about all the entire Apothic series is at www.apothic.com. Um, Apothic Crush, I'm not really sure 
where you can find it outside of the package store. I've only seen it in, in package stores and liquid stores. But again, when you go out on a Poptix website, you will be able to um, find out where in your area. You're just going to put your zip in and find out where in your area you can find um, any particular brand of Apothic. Okay. All right. So let's pull up. Okay, you guys, <clears throat> I'm a stickler about the dripping. I don't care for the dripping. Um, I will tell you now that the paint, um, which is that drag that happens when you pour it, is pretty substantial. You can't see it here, but when you pour it in your bottle, you'll see it sort of clinging on to the sides as it goes down. That paint will tell you a lot about the thickness, the richness, the um, palatability of the wine. This is all just my terms, okay? I'm no sommelier um, or sommelier, but um, I love red wine and I know a lot about red wine. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let's now put our nose in the glass, okay? Mm. It has some really, really, really smooth, um, mature, velvety flavors. And I'm getting like a like a nutty, nutty, nutty flavor in my, up in, up in my nostrils. I'm getting a really naughty flavor. Let's try it. Um, let me just tell you what I'm feeling as I'm sipping this. <clears throat> this wine is it's not serious. It's um I don't know, it feels simple. Um it's not very complex. Um I have had better wines for a um, less expensive price point. Again, price points vary depending on uh, what city you're in, the laws in those cities, um, taxation, things like that. But just initial shelf price point, this is about a $14 bottle, um, which is what I paid for, I think $13.75 or something like that. Um, and um, I'll tell you really what it puts you in the mind of. 
this puts you in the mind of Chianti. If you've ever had Chianti, um, if you've ever been in an Italian restaurant and asked for a bottle of red wine or a glass of red wine, this tastes like something they would bring you. Um, I mean, just to be honest, it is... Um, Like I said, it's a good time wine. That, that That's really all I have to say about it. It's a good time wine. This this wine just wants to have fun. If you want to dance around with your friend um, and, you know, get a little, you know, <laughs> have a little fun. Yeah, this is a good wine for that. <clears throat> um. I don't know. I think I was expecting it to be a little bit more rosy. Uh, I think I was expecting it to have as much complexity as I've, I've gotten from Apothic Inferno, um, which was hugely complex. And, and that that's a phenomenal wine, especially for the price point. Um, I was expecting it to have um, as much depth um, as Apothic Dark. But it is very light. It's very airy. It's, like I said, it's a good time wine. You know what I mean? It's a wine you, um, you know, you may have at dinner uh, with your guy. Um, you know, it's one of those wines that men buy for women. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... One of the things that I want to do now, because I've gotten a lot of questions about um, how you choose a good wine, I want to just talk to you guys really quickly about that. I'm going to eat a smoked nut. <laughs> well, I talked to you guys about that, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about why I'm doing that. Now... Um, you guys have heard me talk about a nosh, and that's just a little small bite to eat. Um, not in a moose bouche, which means small bite, but just little things you put out when you have friends over, things you put on the counter, people can nosh on, little cheese. Um, I had a friend over on Monday. And we had some La Roule, um cheese, cranberry, with cranberries, which was uh, left over from Thanksgiving. And it was on clearance at Kroger. I only buy clearance cheese at Kroger, okay? Because cheese is expensive. Um, and it went beautifully with the pack of sesame crackers that were on sale two for five. You guys, I do everything on a, on a budget. Now, I'm not bougie. I just like wine. I know a lot about the things that I like, but I'm not uppity, okay? So I had clearance cheese and on sale crackers. I mean, I had it with Inferno, and it was just beautiful. Like, it was so perfect. Um, So a good cheese is something that I put out with some crackers, something soft, something people don't have to struggle with. Um, a little cube cheese if you can get some shavings of an Havarti or, um, you know, some really, really good cheeses. Just get a small little piece of cheese, you know, three or four dollars a piece from your local market and try it out with a good cracker. Um, a smoked nut not only will prepare your palate to take the next sip of wine, um, but it's like eating a small piece of meat. It just deepens the flavor of the wine and it heightens the experience. So I like smoked nuts 
This is um, smoked almonds from Family Dollar. And um, so I get smoked nuts um, and I have those out. <clears throat> and then I just have your basic roasted salted nut that I put out. I like almonds. I feel like almonds are a perfect um, accoutrement to um, a red wine and fruit I never ever 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 serve pineapple with my wine because pineapple wipes your palate it just whoa. unless it's super super ripe super super sweet it just destroys everything in your palate so whatever you drink after that it's like orange juice and toothpaste it don't go together um, but berries blackberries strawberries blueberries um beautiful beautiful grapes um go really really well with wine and these are things that people can just uh sip and take a little bit and eat and talk and engage okay so now what i'm going to do is go back in after i've had a couple of smoked nuts and now i'm going to retaste this apothic crush um normally i can get a really really good sense of what it is i like or don't like about a wine from those first couple of sips um i'm a little surprised by this crush I, like i said um it doesn't appeal to the wine lover in me but i want to give it another opportunity after i have muddied my palate a little bit okay with the smoke almonds let's try it Okay. 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 <clears throat> this is the wonderful, wonderful thing about red blends. Unlike a straight Chardonnay or a straight Pinot, a straight Malbec, a straight Shiraz. Every time you take a sip of a red blend, you will get a more dominant component. The component, the dominant component you got before, which my component before was a very, very light berry, uh, fruity, 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 fruity texture that wasn't appealing to me. Um, and fruit textures can be rich or they can be um just really light and airy and kind of juicy like a juice that's what i was getting in the beginning but once i muddied my palate a little bit with the smoked nut it changes things which is why pairings are so important if you buy yourself a good bottle of wine Pair it with your favorite dish, okay? I love red wine with um, Caribbean food. It goes beautifully with spicy food. Um, lamb, beef, a good fish, like a cod, mahi-mahi, a thick fish, salmon, okay? If you're going to put it with a trout, which is a lighter fish, I would I would put it with a blackened trout, okay? Because red wines have savory components that go well with savory food, okay? So um, this video is a little bit longer, you guys, and I'm sorry, but I wanted to answer some questions that I've been getting in my previous wine videos. Um, so... Your nosh is really important. If you taste the red wine and you feel like, eh, muddy your palate a little bit. Get yourself something to um, bounce those flavors off of. Fruit, um, a good salted chip, like a kettle chip. Um, not a kettle chip with a lot of flavors, okay? Just a regular salted chip, okay? Because salt muddies the palate a little bit. And it doesn't make it so 
washed, so whitewashed, okay? Um, this wine opened up beautifully once I muddied my palate a little bit, which is why a nosh is really good, a little cheese, a um, little cracker with a little sodium on it with the cheese, um, a good piece of fruit, a smoked nut or a roasted nut. Um, these are really, really great things to just have around your house to put out when you have guests. Um, so that they can um, experience their wine in different layers. Again, a good red blend opens up depending on what your palate is doing. If your palate is muddied, if your palate is fresh, if um, you have had something sweet, a beautiful chocolate dessert, which brings me to my next component <clears throat> on the Nosh scale. I wanted to introduce you guys to, and that is um, Brookside. Now, I love a good dark chocolate with my wine. Um, this is new from Brookside, which is Crunchy Clusters. You can get your standard Brookside, which is the um, dark chocolate covered pomegranate, uh, dark chocolate covered um, blueberries, they have a varied amount of fruit, um, that come covered in dark chocolate. This is a new product by them called, um, almonds and berry flavored dark chocolate, and it's a little crunch. So it has a little nut, a little fruit, dark chocolate, um, it says roasted almonds, crispy multigrains, soft fruit flavored pieces, and crunchy toffee bits. Um, and it goes beautifully with the red man. It's the complexity that you need in order to um, open up your wine um, on a different level. So I, I always recommend a little sweet as well, which eat with each of these components, you will have a different experience with your red blend. Okay. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about is how to pick a red wine. Um, you need to just go to the store, go to a really, really good wine store. Um, they don't want to have one, I think here in Mississippi, but, um, total wine is a great package store. Go to a package store in, um, your neighborhood, that has a good array of wines. If they have a good array of wines, more likely than not, they know about wines. And um, if you go into places like Total Wines, which is a wine warehouse, they have tastings. They have um, sip stations where you can go and take little thimblefuls of different wines. Again, when you first taste a wine and you taste it with a fresh palate, it may taste completely different than if you have yourself a little, if you muddy your palate with something of savory. Um, for me, this wine has opened up beautifully because I've had something savory. Now, I did that because I know Apothic brands and I know they make a great red blend. So for me to have a wine that I didn't like, I knew it had to been something that was off. Yeah. <clears throat> now I can feel those berry tones. I can, I can, uh, I got that mouth feel um, that the label talks about. I can feel the depth in the flavor. And when I breathe it back through my nose from the inside of my mouth, it has a very, very whimsical, but still a slightly rustic feel to it, okay? Because I muddied my palate a little bit. Um, but again, go in the store, talk to someone, tell someone what your price point is, what you're willing to spend, and talk to them a little bit about the wine. If they say, this is a good red blend, you ask them why they think it's a good red blend. That's a good start to knowing if you're dealing with someone who has a good wine palate. So again, honeybees, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that I have opened your, you guys' eyes a little bit more 
to the Apothic um, brands to how to pick out a red wine and then how to um, sort of marry your palate with a good red wine and open up the experience for you a little bit more. Okay, honeybees, until next time, I'll holla.